sound Perhaps. off. We're gonna sound so off that. here. Amanda's here. Anna. I am here. Hello, and thank you everybody for joining us for another week of Ladies Playing Indies. Yeah, Allison is here to join us. Say hi, Allison. Hi! She's super interested in the game, and she was going to be my co-pilot, but we were silly, <laughs> and we didn't realize that lo like multiplayer was local. And then we are joined by Grant Roberts, who is the designer for the game. Sound off, Grant. Hello, Grant. Sounding off. I'm here. Hello. Yay! Okay, <laughs> start over. How did How did this come to be? Repeat yourself I, I, once again. I don't remember. I don't remember that. <laughs> no. um, well, uh, a few years ago, uh, back in 2012, um, the Cook Inlet yeah. Tribal Council, or CITC, uh, which has been around for decades to help with uh, to help the indigenous youth and indigenous people of Alaska uh, help with finding employment and uh, treating treating addiction and all kinds of. Uh, all kinds of services for them, and they've been they've been trying to to find a way for a while to to broaden their reach to to spread the 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 culture of, of Native Alaska to the rest of the world to to find a way to to share what they're about with a modern audience, and so it was actually their idea to make a video game to do it, and they approached they approached us they 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 sought out partners uh, game development partners traditional game development partners and met um glory o'neill is the ceo of uh the cook and Lead tribal council and she met alan gershenfeld who is the president of eli media and they they hit it off and they developed a great working relationship and that's that's where this all started and they very quickly we got everybody together we got members of the alaska native community uh storytellers elders and artists and musicians and everything met with the more traditional uh, core game developers based in seattle and new york and everywhere and they had this multi-day uh, round table workshop and discussion to um to get on the same page and like every you know hear each other and talk to each other and and it kind of progressed from there the the some of the members of the development team uh, from Seattle have gone up to Barrow, Alaska, a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. uh, the North Slope of Alaska, the most nor the northernmost city in the U.S. Actually, um, yeah, it's it's cold. They just went up there again, cold, and it was yeah. I think minus twenty seven degrees the whole oh time they were there. Uh, so that's cold. Uh, and members of the Alaska Native community, including elders and storytellers, came down to visit Seattle, and we got to to listen to them share their stories, both you know traditional narrative stories and also like what it was like for them growing up and migrating from village to village in the arctic and it was just completely different from everything else i've ever experienced in this business it was great what was one of your favorite stories that they told you is that the one that uh, actually made it into never alone or well the so yeah the the never alone's story and narrative is based on the story of kanuk Suyuka, which is uh, a well-known story with the alaska native people and it was just one of many it was uh we literally read dozens and hundreds of, of stories to, to 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 get inspired by them and to also just uh like Get, get inspired and also look for a, a way to to oh tell God, a story in the it. game. <laughs> Sorry, oh no, <laughs> I didn't make the jump. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we, we there were a bunch of different ones. There were we kind of narrowed it down to like ten different candidates for mm -hmm. what we wanted to adapt into the main framework of Never Alone, and we settled on Kunuksiuka. But there were a bunch of other stories. But a lot of the my most favorite things came from just the kind of incidental things that we would hear along the way where, you know, with the Northern Lights and, and, and Anna Nagayak says this in one of the cultural insights, mm -hmm. if you go out at night you have to put your hood up over your head or else the Aurora people will come down steal your head and play soccer with it. Whoa, that's awesome. And, like, and there's all kinds of stuff like that that's just like, that's just part of their belief. That's just part of what, what it's like. And it was, you know, yeah. the Aurora people are the northern lights are used to to basically warn children to come home early, to not stay out mm -hmm. too late, or they'll get their head stolen and have soccer played with their head. But there are all kinds of other stories, like Ishmael Hope, the game's writer and our and our most frequent collaborator from the Inupiaq and Tlingit communities, um, has recently made us aware of the, the story of the Big Mouth Baby, it's called. And that's like one of the mm -hmm. most popular stories in uh, in Alaska Native culture. And it's just a story about a baby with a giant mouth that ends up devouring its parents and then kind of terrorizing the land around it. And wow. there's all, so there's just, you know, stories that take a total left turn from what you'd expect. They're, they're yeah. frequently pretty violent or brutal or harsh. And they're, they're very different from, from what you kind of traditional Western stories. Right. 
I have a question from the chat. Uh, Sean D. Knight asks, uh, did you always plan on make the, making the game a side-scroller, or were there other types you had considered, such as playing the game from a top-down perspective? We considered a lot of things. Uh, the We came to a decision to make it a puzzle platformer pretty quickly, but before that we considered all kinds of different genres, and we're still considering, you know, we've, we've developed this incredible relationship with the Alaska Native community and with our mm -hmm. partners at Upper One Games that we want to keep making games set in Alaska. Like, we've done all the work now yes. to, like, develop Yay. these relationships, and we want more of that. So we're still exploring making, for whatever we make next, being different genres, maybe. Or maybe it'll be another puzzle platform. We don't know yet. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there's all kinds of opportunities in front of us. But a puzzle platformer really let us... You know, people are pretty familiar with platformers as a genre. They've been around yeah. for a while. Um, and a puzzle platformer really let us, like, get the camera in close and really spend a lot of our time on the animations for Nuna and Fox and and really, you know, s develop that relationship between the characters. So it was a pretty good fit for what we were trying to do. God, the Excellent. fox is so cute. I know, oh, the God. fox is so <laughs> okay. adorable. Uh, a lot of people are really enjoying, like, every time I hear anything about it, never a little... Oh, no. <laughs> It's uh, always positive about the art style as well. Yeah. Um, and it was the art style mostly just inspired by all the native artworks and the stories itself, or how did you guys decide on this particular art style? It mostly was, yeah. Like Dima Veriovka is the art director at Eline, and he, in art school, I believe he went to the, the art school of St. Petersburg or something. He's from the... Uh, mm -hmm from Asia and uh, he studied uh, indigenous art and indigenous culture while he was there so he had already had a background in that so once it was time to actually make the, the art style for the game he was very heavily inspired by indigenous art and scrimshaw and that kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, you know that that's a very different uh, you, and you can kind of see that influence in this in the artwork for the spirits and the scrimshaw and things like that um, as far as the environment and the rest of the game um, it was you know, it, this kind of dreamlike quality uh, was very important for for them to to figure out, and it's it, the kind of depth of field and the vignetting that they have, just kind of creating a very soft, desaturated uh, look to it, uh, was really important uh, to get that to get that style down. But mm -hmm. it's it's you know it's I'm not being immodest when I say that it looks incredible, even though I worked on it because <laughs> I, I didn't so have anything well like I didn't do the art, and so I can say that Dima and Casey and KL and Alexi and Anne and Adrian, all of our amazing artists, are just you know they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, speaking speaking of that, you didn't do the art. Why don't you tell everybody what you did do on this game? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> yeah. Well, every Tuesday and Thursday, I would come and empty the trash cans in the office. <laughs> uh, I was the lead game designer on Never Alone, uh, and there were at our biggest there were five other designers uh on the game and my main job uh, as the lead game designer was making sure that they were able to 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 do their jobs and make the game well i was still also responsible for you know maintaining the vision of the game and like making sure the mechanics were progressing well and everything else but um there was a lot of making sure that those guys had what they needed to 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 do their job so i also you know we're a pretty small studio comparatively you know we're we're pretty big for, you know, a, kind of a traditional indie studio, but we were still, there aren't too many of us there. So I would kind of pick up whatever else, pick up the slack, whatever needed doing. So I keep seeing, like, every time Amanda comes across something new, I see these little cultural insights pop up. Yeah, the, we, there are, I think, 23 of them in the game, and they're, mm -hmm. they're video interviews and features with... Uh, members of the Alaska Native community, like I mentioned before, a lot of the people that we collaborated with the most closely uh, are on camera talking about their experiences and talking about, you know, climate change or, you know, what it was like to have a pet fox. And, and Fanny talks about how she, when she was younger, they had a pet polar bear and she used to ride on what? it. Just this like what? incredible story. Yeah, I know. That's amazing. Watch the cultural insights. Yeah. I love to learn more about cultures and history and stuff like that. So immediately when I first heard about this game, I was instantly drawn to it and be like, oh, I can learn something from this game because I love games that teach you something yeah. along with having a great story experience or having a great gaming experience. Yeah, and we do too. I mean, that like that's it was important for, for me personally and for the development team too to make sure that the game was fun for like, mm -hmm. you know, you can you can learn something over the course of the game, but if you but if the game's not fun, then nobody's gonna play it. You know, nobody's right. gonna remember it afterwards, even no matter how noble our mission is or um, that that. But learning, I I learned an incredible amount along the way too, and I've heard from a lot of people the same thing as as you just said that you know they they 
didn't know anything about the culture before this, and now they do, and it's a, they, mm -hmm. they feel much more they feel enriched because of that. You guys did really, really well in capturing that sort of like overall spirit of it, mm -hmm. of the culture. I used, lived in Alaska when I was really, really young, from until like five. But we have family friends we used to visit when I was younger. Oh wow! And that the game when I first heard of this, I was super excited because like my parents were really um, adamant about including like. Uh, a feel for the culture that we were living in and especially even just I, we lived in Anchorage and like that's that very idea of being connected to the environment and you know having this sort of relationship with animals that are native to the, the area and all that um, I feel like that was so well done in this game no that's that was that was super important to us right like we like I mentioned earlier you want like we wanted it to be authentic we wanted it to be evocative of the world that the Alaska Native community lives in to this day, and their history, and their culture, and their stories. So, yeah. um, the they were we explored a lot of you know we we asked the Inupiaq community like what are some values that are core that you think are core to yourselves that are core to your people, and we got a big list of you know fifteen or twenty things, but we kind of we narrowed it down to the three themes of intergenerational exchange between you know elders and youth and, and that kind of thing and with those who have come before you um resilience and sort of survival because arctic is pretty harsh mm -hmm. um and interdependence which was the biggest one in the game and right. it's not just interdependence between nuna and fox or between like nuna and the you know her family it's interdependence with nature it's interdependence with yeah. the land because yeah. everything has right. they believe that that sia they're they're there, everything has a spirit. Everything has a spirit. They call it Sia. From and and Fanny says in one of the cultural insights, everything from the ground under your feet to the to the the moon and the stars and the plants and everything has a spirit. And so everything has to be respected as a result of that. Mm -hmm, and we right. so we tried. I'm glad to hear that that you thought that we represented it well because that was absolutely a goal. Yeah, it was definitely like because um, it, it felt for me personally at least because I I. Me, I was really, really young, so like I had the sort of general feel of you know this. It was integrated in my child, very early childhood experience, and so I think that was sort of something that um, was very. It just that that atmosphere was so, and it paired with the way that the game was done as as an interactive thing. Just I think they complement each other really well. Yeah, I mean that that was we were. I don't, I don't want to say surprised, but we were we were very pleased that the the translation of the story and the translation of the values into a game experience worked so well, or you know they, that that was such a good fit for it, you know. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah, it could have very easily we could have very easily made it and then discovered, oh man, like it, it feels like I'm sitting at a desk in school, or right. this doesn't feel like it was made with the community, even if it was, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. th those would be very bad outcomes. So. Mm -hmm. um, glad that we that, that we that most people think we succeeded including members of the community that we've talked to like they've said that they're not the entire I can't speak for the entire community as a mm -hmm. whole but right. the people we've talked to say that they feel proud of this they feel proud that this game Aww. represents their culture they, that's so great they're yeah, happy for it. That was, I know yeah. <laughs> I got goosebumps when you said that I'm welling yeah. up a little bit I think the videos help so much. I mean, should, yeah. we, should we watch one of those? Like, let's see what yeah, let's we do have, it. Um, a people of culture. One of the things I think a lot of people need to understand is we aren't a museum piece. The Inupiaq people are a living people and a living culture. Even though we're in northern Alaska, which covers this vast area from Nome all the way over the Canadian border, is that there is this extreme value of interconnectedness and interdependence. It's a hunting society, a gathering society, from thousands of years. This is what creates our culture. That special relationship between humans and the natural world and the animals, and that it teaches you how to have a, a society that doesn't do too much harm to the world. Love and respect for nature, for one another, for our elders, very, very fundamental value, key to, key to life.
So our values are something that bind us all. The importance of sharing with one another, the importance of spirituality, and the connection to the land, our traditions, how we hunt, sharing of stories and songs and dances. I'm Inipak. I'm from the Arctic Ocean. Inipak. I am Inipak. It's very important to me. It's, it's who I am as a person. And we're very proud of who we are, and we want to continue that. Cool. Uh, if you just, like, there's a lot of information online about, about the Inupiaq people, about the Alaska Native people, if you, if, you, uh, if you just look for it. It's just that I think a lot of people, you know, before this game or kind of in general, wouldn't know to look for it, you know? Yeah. Like there's, there are a lot of, and there are thousands, literally thousands of cultures like this in the world where like people just don't know about them. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that we were able to, to help raise awareness and kind of showcase and curate the, this culture. Definitely. And I'm so happy that you guys also have like a female lead. Like that's really important. Yeah. I think especially in this day and age too. So Yes. Awesome. It's very, very important. And, and she kicks so much butt. Especially yeah. in this day and age, right? And and it, you know, it was very important to the leads, uh it was very important to the whole team to have a strong female character, like because they're, you know, I, we all know that there that there aren't enough of them. First of all, they're mm -hmm. underrepresented in games, and especially for like a lot of the the leads, the leadership on the team, myself not included. I don't have any children yet, but like Sean Vesey, my boss, the creative director, studio head, he's got two girls. Uh, Dave Caning, our tech director, he's got three girls. Uh, Dima, the art director, has one girl. So they, they. Even if they didn't have daughters, they would be inspired to create a strong female character. But the fact that they do really reinforces, you know, they want to create something that their that their daughters will be proud to play, that they'll be inspired by, you know. Um, and yeah, especially in the last, you know, six or nine months, it's been uh, pretty important for uh, for for women being being represented well in games. And mm -hmm. you know, if uh, I could soapbox a lot and and, and show my <laughs> social justice warrior cred, but it does mean a lot to. Me personally, I can't speak for Elon, but it means a lot to me personally that Anita Sarkeesian mentioned Never Alone and Nuna as being one of the best examples of a of a female character in games. So, oh wow, I didn't even realize that. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, she yes. So that that happened, and we were very happy with that. And it's funny we bet we've uh, we've actually been we've been approached by some other cultures around the world who have seen what we've done with the inclusive development process and want to work with us to make a game. Oh wow. Uh, based on their culture and one of the things we've learned as we've been talking to them and like you know reading stories about other cultures is that there are a lot of common threads like the little people show up not just in alaska native stories but they're also in you know in other cultures as well they'll be just the same kind of concept like a, a little person who is just like a regular person only two feet tall and they're mm -hmm. incredibly strong mm -hmm. you'll see that in alaska culture and hawaii culture and everything else so there's yeah. a lot of shared things hey, um like uh i love the way it is like just as a side note like I, i'm sure it would have been like interesting and more complicated if he would have had more button mechanics and stuff like that but i just want to say that the feel of that like when you just they just kind of kind of following him it feels so i don't know it feels silly to say it's authentic to be playing an arctic fox and have spirits <laughs> follow you around but it feels no, but I know what like you mean. it should. Yeah, it feels like yeah. that's right. Yeah, I mean, the spirits are very, you know, they're they're soft, they're ethereal. Like, it makes sense that you're not, like, hold X to spirit. Like, that's what we don't <laughs> right? like, It shouldn't be that complicated. It, it shouldn't be that pedestrian. But mm -hmm. uh, finding that right balance would have been the, the right way to go. Yeah, we did, We wouldn't have wanted to make it, like, heavy rain style, like you're holding five different buttons to move the... to. The spirits. That's a, that's too obscure. Uh, Nobody's played heavy. That's what I thought of too when you said hold X to <laughs> no spirit. I was like, oh, okay. Jason. Heavy rain is amazing. Jason. Oh my God, the man's gonna get me. Robert Cleveland. He's yes. uh, the guy with the glasses in most of the videos, right? Or no? No, Robert Cleveland uh, passed away a long time ago. Oh. Um, he was the he was the storyteller who had the first. Uh, he was the his telling of the Kanuksayuka story was the first occasion of that story appearing in written form. Oh, cool. oh wow! And his daughter Minnie Gray uh, is I think she's in her late eighties or nineties, and mm -hmm. we got her blessing uh, to use his, uh, Robert Cleveland's version of Kanuksayuka for the game. 
That is oh, so wow. Awesome. That is we awesome. met with her, and there's kind of a great picture of, of her with a with an Xbox controller in her hand as she's checking Aww. out the game. Aww. <laughs> oh, we're That's a bunch of girls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I make that noise all the time. <laughs> I like the fishes, by the way. The fishes make me really happy. Yeah, the spear and fish are, are pretty cute. Uh, oh, there was a while there where they were spirit walruses, and we changed it to fish. Oh, that has never been walruses. made public before. You get a bitch team Elsa <laughs> Alpha exclusive. Oh man, <laughs> spirit walruses sounds that, amazing yeah, though. Sound yeah, well, they, I think they'll, they'll probably show up. Never alone too, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, there. you will play, and you are the spirit walrus in oh Never Alone too. There's now I have a shirt that just says "You are the spirit walrus," and then underneath it, "Never Alone." <laughs> <laughs> I would buy that shirt. Let me go yeah, to Cafe would... Press and make that. Oh my gosh! Every single episode, do we it. Have, uh, we have a Cafe Press shirt because last episode it's true. there was the. Oh god, what was it? What was last episode? Something from. We'll have to watch. Anyway, yeah, but we had a we had a shirt that we were gonna make from the last episode too. We're gonna have to start keeping track and make a a, a Cafe Press. Oh my gosh, I'm doing this all wrong. This is one of my other favorite of the cultural insights, and I don't, I don't know for sure. Yeah, that's enough of them. that's Fanny in the video, and she's really great. I'm sad that I didn't actually get to meet her personally, but uh, but hopefully uh -huh. there's we'll, we'll 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 work with her again and meet with her again. The little polar bear cubs are so cute. Can't yeah, they are. They're adorable. Oh, I wish they didn't like to eat people. Oh my gosh, this polar bear is super derpy. I love it. <laughs> they, they, they do seem like their feet are too big for them. So like when they run around in the derp 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 derp. That was the exactly original the audio noise. that we had for the bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever says you know that we we wouldn't know you know because how would you know if that's the noise they make when they're about to eat you and <laughs> no one has lived to report. <laughs> Fact. Oh man. Oh, cute cubs. Oh, it's. I can't do this. I can't watch it. <laughs> I think that would be less scary if a polar bear was chasing you down, and right before you died, it was like herp derp derp derp. I'd be like, okay, you win, polar bear. You can eat me. It's yeah. Fine. Right. Fair enough. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Man, so we're dwindling down for thing. the evening. Um, Grant, where? Where can people get Never Alone, and if there's anything else you want to promote, if people want to follow you on Twitter, give us give us your infos. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Never Alone launched on November 18th. It's available on on PC, uh, both Steam and a standalone version. If you if you're into that kind of thing, uh, it's also available on Xbox One and PS4. It's download only. Um, we're going to be releasing, like I said, if, in case you missed it, uh, the Mac version is coming out in the next few weeks. Uh, we're hoping for more platforms as we go forward with the rest of the year. Um, and that's it. We're hoping to tell more stories with Nuna and Fox because they're adorable and awesome. Mm -hmm. And Nuna's a great character, and I want to have her in more games. Um, so, yeah, watch for that in 2015. Um, hey. I am, is there a as it says here? at the bottom... Is there a pan Go for ahead. A, a fox plushie? Because I feel like I need a fox plushie in my oh life. My oh my god! Uh, <laughs> we, the number of times we've been asked that, and the number of times I've been like, "Yes, we really should have a fox plushie." <laughs> uh, it's just a, a question of of return when? on investment, right? Okay. Like we want to we we want to we want to do that too. Like, and it's funny because one of our our amazing animator Adrian uh, actually made his own uh, fox hoodie. Oh, uh, cute. Which, which you uh, and like had little ears on it and everything. It was the most adorable thing I've ever oh seen, God. but it took him a long time to make himself. So it was a labor of love. But yeah. no, no Fox plushies yet. Uh, no <laughs> merchandise yet. We would love to. Um, well, I but, hope you do but... get to. Now we have water and we're about out of time. So uh, thank you. Abs you know, I know Anna's already said all this, but really, really thank you for joining mm -hmm. us. And I'm sorry yes, that it took you and me so long to coordinate something. And I'm so happy you, you bore with me. No, that. it's fine. It was my pleasure. It's it. I, it was it was it was a pleasure to join you. It was no trouble working every all the details out. It was great. I'm very glad I could I could uh, uh, I could meet you guys and and come on. Awesome. So Definitely. with that, we're gonna I'm gonna end the stream now, guys. Thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah. All of thanks our for joining attendees us. who hang who hung out with us through all of our hardships. Yay. And yeah. hopefully next time I will not have as many hardships. I'll practice more with with <laughs> all of the computers in my house so that I have five <laughs> backup plans. 
All right, guys. All good right. night, everybody. Good night.